We are here. We are we here. Have, <laughs> we have come back. We are back from the... Well, we've oh, never been dead. But shot. we're back <laughs> from the one shot. All right. Yes. So welcome we back. We did. Welcome back, adventurers, to another Dungeons and Dragons episode with your cast here at Lakeside Legends. This week, we start our new campaign, and we are doing the Curse of Strad. Oh, it's going to be so good. I am so excited. I have been studying up on this for the past, like, month, and it's such a good campaign. It's so crazy. There's lots of stuff. It might get a little less family-friendly at points here and there because it is a little twisted. That's kind of what they did when they made this campaign. But we will keep it as family friendly as we can. PG-13 there's rating. PG-13, yeah. Well, there's still not going to be any swearing and, you know, mm -hmm. nothing like that. No nudity, even though we play in the imagination. Um, so there wouldn't be anyway. But still, uh, <laughs> so then stuff gets, you know, it's the Curse of Strad. It's, it is what it is. So first, we have Imrilir Sardith, the Shadow Elf Ranger, played by Lore. Kinsley, our Furbolg Cleric, played by Blair. Me, a Changeling Druid, played by Arthur. And Francisco Guadalupe del Valle, a Changeling Fighter, played by Trevor. And let's not forget about yours truly, your DM and master storyteller for this saga, DM David. Woo! Yay! Woo! All right. Get it! Get it! On our last episode, our heroes continued through uh, continued their journey through the Wave Echo Caves. Having just finished a massive battle with a number of nasty bugbears, the team decided it was a good time to find a safe area to hunker down for the night. After backtracking a bit, the adventurers started a round of trial and error, opening different doors, some of which contained enemies, until a safe place was finally found. After a long night's rest, our heroes continued through the caves, tactfully running through a room filled with poisonous fungi, making deals with a lingering phantom that, in life, used to work at the Spellforge, and finally disposing of a conjured spectator who had been summoned to guard the forge centuries ago. Through these events, our rowdy crew picked up a number of treasures, including what appeared to be a Taroka card, featuring a hilltop castle on one side and a Vardo-style wagon on the other. After a few more hours of searching, our heroes finally encountered the Black Spider. A ferocious battle ensued, and at one point, it appeared our heroes might even get overpowered. However, in a clinch move, Kinsley, the party's cleric, cast Spirit Guardians, hitting almost every bad guy in the room and revealing the Black Spider as his spell of his invisibility dropped after the attack. With the main target revealed, our hero successfully defeated the Black Spider and ended his tyrannical reign over Phandalin and the Kragmaw. Searching one final room, our adventurers found Gundren's other brother, Nundro, and escorted the badly beaten dwarf out of the mines and back to Phandalin. The feeling of success our heroes had would not last for long, however. As they stood outside the Stonehill Inn, they noticed something new sitting beside the idol of Timora in Phandalin Town Square. A Vardo-style wagon had appeared, and a little old lady was sitting outside telling fortunes. She beckoned the group over and offered to read them their futures with her Taroka cards. Upon seeing them, Mi dove into the bag and pulled out the single Taroka card they had found in the caves. The old lady then proceeded to tell the group their fortune, but she chose to use a different set of cards. The ones she had been using would not reveal the future our heroes needed to know. Five cards were pulled each one important as they provided information on some unknown enemy. According to the fortune teller, card number one told of a treasure that contains a history of the enemy. Card two, a trinket of holy power that will offer protection. Card number three revealed the location of a weapon of vengeance, the Sword of Light. The fourth told our heroes who they could ask for help in their battle against this great enemy. And the final card revealed exactly where they could find him, when the time was right. This card reading left our heroes feeling uneasy. The fog had begun to gather around them, the town of Phandalin had faded away, and as they turned to look back at the fortune teller, she and her wagon vanished. In the near distance, howling began to penetrate the forest. One, two, 
10, 20, their numbers began to grow and the distance between our heroes and those voices was closing. That is where we are now. So you guys are in what seems to be a forest if surrounded by fog. You hear howling coming from behind you and a little bit on the sides, but the path in front of you appears clear. Yeah, and I out. listen and just like concentrate on that path forward. Uh, and like, if there really yeah, isn't go, anything there. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was so close, Molly. Um. Okay, hold on. Why are you stuck? I don't. Uh, uh. Um, I think I'm a plus. My thing's not working. Um, I'm going to say twelve. I think my character. Okay. Thing's not well, it's it doesn't take very much. The uh, most of the noise you hear, most of the howling is coming from behind you guys. You you listen intently with your elf ears uh, forward, trying to hear if there's anything. Uh, you don't hear anything in front of you. It seems as if they are all coming from behind and a little bit to the sides. Um, but fog is everywhere, so you guys are on a path, surrounded, uh, and the path in front of you appears to be clear. I bring out Lightbringer and I make it glow. Okay. As bright as a torch. So me pulls out Lightbringer um, and and brings to light the energy that is stored within, and a beacon of light shoots up into the sky. It is now very bright around you. It does not penetrate the fog very well, um, but it it it's bright. Um, Almost we, blindingly, because it is reflecting off the fog. No, you cannot see through the fog. You can see away. probably, like, ten feet in front of you at most. Put it away. Put it away. That was a lot brighter than I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Put so, it away. <laughs> quick question. Yeah. My max, I can see in the dark for forever away. I just... Because of the fog, I can't see, right? Yeah, it's not okay. a darkness thing. It's, not a darkness, it's strictly it's a fog. super fog. And when you guys look behind you, it seems even thicker. Mm. Uh, I on. vote we go forward. I yeah, grab voices... spit. I give it Kinsley a little nudge with my foot, and I start running. Uh, okay, I have, we're running. I have, yeah. I have okay. my sword and shield. I'm still prepared. crying, but I'm running. So you guys are running, and you guys hear that the uh, the howls and the wolves are coming behind you, and you start to hear you start to hear the steps behind you. You start to hear the wolves uh, closing in, and you actually uh, hear snaps at your heels uh, right behind you. Yet they never seem to actually connect. You guys run. Uh, and I would run like to swing my run. sword at one of them, just kind of like reach behind me real fast and. Stab okay. at one. Go ahead. Uh, give me an attack roll. Okay. While he's doing this, can I see if it's like actually? Can I perceive or insights or something to see if it's actually like not an illusion? Since so that's kind of my. That's thing. yeah. That's kind of what I, what I wanted to if, figure yes. out with my so, sword swing. So go ahead, do your sword swing. If you want to do a um, a perception check, uh, Imerlier, you can. Okay. Um, that is a seventeen. That hits. So your sword connects, and you hear, a and then it rolls off to the side. Okay. Twenty-three. They are very real. They are very real. Run, <laughs> run, run. Yeah, and you, you look. You look behind you, and even though you can only see so much, you see probably 10, 15 dire wolves right behind you, nipping mm. at your heels. Oh, you... yeah, we're sprinting. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to word of radiance real quick. Anyone that's in, like any of them that is within five feet. Okay, let's go make ahead. a constitution saving throw. I don't know how many are there. I'll but... just make one and it's going to decide something. They failed. As soon as you say your word of radiance, all of them disperse. It just okay. so happens. It just so happens that as soon as you do that, the fog in front of you starts to lift. The fog behind you doesn't just stay on the ground, but lifts and essentially creates a wall. A wall of fog 
directly behind you and in front as the fog is clearing this is what you guys see what did i do <laughs> mm. Some prevented crazy. us from running into anything that would <laughs> kill us. I just crap. wanted to damage a couple of them. I didn't even... Holy cow. Oh. So it starts to clear. Ahead of you, jutting from the impenetrable woods on both sides of the road, are high stone buttresses looming gray in the fog. Huge iron gates hang on the stonework. Dew clings with cold tenacity to the rusted bars. Two headless statues of armed guardians flank the gate, their heads now laying among the weeds at their feet. They, ge they greet you only with silence. Okay. Are we? Uh, yeah, this... Ah, uh, I don't this think doesn't... we are in Fandolin anymore. Uh... Yeah, this doesn't feel... like... At all where we were. Yes, it, it, it did not feel normal. I, yeah. I, uh, Is anyone I, familiar with teleportation? I mean, I only know a little. Wait, I am going to. This will probably not do anything, but once per short rest, I can detect portals within a mile of me. Can I sense any portals? Um, one second. Uh, da, da, da. So you go ahead and use your sense, um, and you don't sense any portals around you. Um, you kind of maybe get the feeling that however you got where you are, it may have been done in a way that doesn't have a lingering effect. No portals. Maybe yeah, a no. Teleportation spell? I don't know. Uh, not having an arcane user is very trifling. Yes, uh, I wish we had someone more magical too. Uh, I, I, I can I? Is there any way around it? Is like this just so like one big cliff wall? So what you see in front of you is you see just this giant. It, what what it was there before? What it appears to be is that this is where on the side the mountains came down, and it was a valley, like a trench, um, between the mountains that people could walk through to get to the other side to get to another valley, and they built a giant wall with a gate right there. And the gate's not open. It is. It oh. is creaked open Slightly did it creep ajar. creak open when we approached or is it is it was it uh, already creaked open um it was already cracked open okay um everybody stay here i'm going to stealth towards it and okay. like see what i can see okay go ahead and give me um, a, a stealth check i'm going to guidance you before you do that oh thank you but it's That's now, a, DM, plus cool D4, question. right? Plus yes. D4. Um, Ooh. Up to a minute. Ooh. Whoa. Francisco, what is your question real quick? Well. Yeah. Um, did we take a long rest? I don't remember. We didn't rest at all. No, we haven't yeah. rested at all. That's, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. And yeah. it's just to one of your ability check rolls. So right. if you don't think nope, you'll I pass, need, then I, don't use it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I rolled... A five. You you first gave me a one. I have a plus six, so it's both. <laughs> okay. So you walk over there trying to be sneaky, hiding between trees as you get closer to the gate. Um, and as you approach, it appears that there is no one there. Um, it just kind of seems that the the gate is left ajar. Um, you kind of peer, uh, peer beyond it. Um, and what you see is uh, just a con like the road continues um, as if it's always been there. Hello? Yes, what do you need? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Is anybody here? This is. You don't hear anything. I'm settling. I don't like it. Nobody has any kind of, like, I don't know, divine sense of, like, 
any magic or to be fair i, I am still it. pretty tired from you know we're all pretty the last tired, two but days I'm, you know yesterday and this morning i am very know. uncomfortable with what is happening right now did you guys follow her up to the gate afterwards or are you still way back Oh, I guess we're way oh. back. <laughs> I, I guess we're way back. back. I would have gone <laughs> back. Okay. I would have gone back. Uh, I can detect magic. That's. I don't know if that would be helpful here. How, how far does it go? 30 I'm feet. Back. <laughs> I think it's 30 feet. Oh, down. Uh, Where are you? Detect magic is 30 feet from me. How far away are we from the gate? 10 minutes. Right now, you guys are probably about 100 feet away. The last 10 maybe, minutes. Maybe maybe go ahead and cast it here to see if it was like it from... If there's anything around us and just walk towards the gate and see if that is magical. I, I don't know. How, how are you on your spells? Are you... Uh, this is something that won't take a spell slot for me, so, or it won't. It won't expend much magic? Yes. It's okay. something I can innately <laughs> do. Then maybe try it just to see. I am, very, like I said, I am very unsettled. I am not comfortable with suddenly being somewhere when I'm not the one who did it. What if, you know, it wasn't Aphrodel or, or Fenris? Okay. Yeah, it uh, might have been Fenris. You know, who knows? It could be a tricky joke from your wizard Fenris friend. Fenris isn't much of a prankster. Oh, he, he is well, the prank. Well, I mean, no, it's complicated. You've not met Fenris. It's fine. Um, maybe, but he's busy. So... No, well. Anyway, maybe maybe try to detect magic and then. Okay. So I'll go ahead and cast detect magic. Okay, so you cast detect magic and you actually sense magic behind you and it's coming from the fog. <gasps> uh, well, the fog is magical. Does that mean it's being conjured by somebody? Conjured or it's... Uh... I go up to the fog and I stab it. <laughs> Your sword goes right through. Nothing happens. <clears throat> I go through the fog. Oh, yes. I go to the fog and I launch myself through it. It tells me what ah. kind of magic is emanating from it. What kind okay. of magic is it? Uh, I would say probably conjuration. It seems as though uh, it has been conjured. Can you tell if it's like being done by someone or if it's an effect of the... Area, I unfortunately can't get that much from it. Right. It appears to me that somebody somebody wants us to go forward. So uh, either it is a trap, or somebody it, it, wants it. our help, or uh, it is destiny and fate. Either way, it appears that there is only one way forward. It seemed to react when I used my uh, radiant magic. That's true. It so and that no. is very concerning, because if no. it reacted to your divine magic, that makes me feel like maybe we are facing something the opposite of divine. I mean, it seemed to protect us from the howling and whatever right. was chasing but us. But you're the only one with that specialty. Well... But... How are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, look at me. What do you mean? I mean, I, I do have Lightbringer. Oh, that's, true. that's true. I pull out Is Lightbringer, I light it up, and I wave it through the fog. No effect. Nothing happens. Ah, uh, that's okay. Great. Never I mind. Think <laughs> the only thing we can do right now is probably move forward, no? What? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, if you want, I will use my body as a protection for all of you. Yeah, sure. You can uh, walk yes. in the meat press. shield. I meat love you, meat shield. Me? Did you? Did you? Okay. Did someone just say they were gonna walk into the fog? 
Me did, I did mention say, that he did. I did say earlier that I was going to try to jump into it. Are you still going to or not? Yes, I'm Uh-oh. going to. Okay, then I need you to give me a constitution saving throw. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Watch me what die the doing? first few minutes. Uh, con save? Me? That's a 16. So you fail. So Boy. immediately, me starts gagging. He starts... I grab him and I pull him back. Okay, you pull him back and he's just... He's just having a hard time breathing now it seems as soon as he did the fog shot into his mouth and into his nose and started suffocating him Uh, that is not okay that is not okay you have now suffered you have now suffered one level of exhaustion okay everybody spit do not walk into that creepy frog okay i mean i wasn't going to i'm not that stupid i mean He's a frog. Uh, uh, it's okay, me. It's okay. It's because you sound like one. It's okay. Can you no, walk? I, can't. I don't know. I give him a little uh. kick in the butt. Ow. Let's go. I'm already okay. exhausted Vamos as it place. is. <laughs> so, you, so you guys start heading towards the gate? Yes. So you start walking towards the gate, and as you do, the fog creeps behind you and follows. I get it away from me. This is not good. But it's it's from as far as the eye can see, it is a wall of fog, and it just and it's just follows. kind of moving it with is us, moving with you. All right. That's so creepy. as soon as you guys get to the gate, and you walk through, it stops, and the wall of fog has stopped at the gate as you've walked through. Is your is your seat has magic still up? Uh, it hasn't been ten minutes, right? Mm-mm, no, Not, it's probably been like almost any, ten. Anything magical about the gate itself? Nope. The only it's thing you detected that was magical was the fog. Well, there's no turning back unless we we'll want to end up like me over there. We still need to give you a different <laughs> name. Hey, <sighs> seaweed. How about that? Your name is seaweed now. Seaweed. <laughs> Who is seaweed? It's uh, it's uh, the, well, it comes from the ocean. It's green and it's is actually kind of pretty. Uh, you know what? Is that I, you know. Know. Uh, I think I will call him Mephisto because it's like me, Mephisto. but it starts, starts with an M. But Mephisto, you know. Mephisto. Mephisto. That's actually you know. kind of cool. Yes, hey, I kind of like kinda it. Cool. Mephisto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're doing this as we're walking. <laughs> yeah, as we're, yeah, we're we're walking. <laughs> no, Maybe we've I all shouldn't. stopped and we're just in a circle, you know, like you're doing high school dances. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, so you guys you someone's guys in the maybe, middle happy uh, dancing. We could call him Mephisto Seaweed. Mephisto Seaweed. I think I'm Don't second guessing trusting you guys or... with naming me. Actually, Mephisto is actually a very that's nice name. a really cool name. It's I don't really know. I it, really sounds like a, it sounds like, like a... It's uh, all right. It's cool. <laughs> I guess. It's, it sounds like an Olympian god or something. Or a warrior. Like, like we were in hell. Why not? Magical. Mm. Okay, as you guys are walking... Uh, you are walking down this old muddy dirt road. You see black pools of water stand like dark mirrors in and around the muddy roadway. Giant trees loom on both sides of the road. Whoa, someone's flying by really close. That's us, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Probably, probably heard all three of us. Yeah, that was pretty loud. They're bad. always flying around looking for someone. Oh, yeah. There's also a flight school. But you guys see giant trees loom on both sides of the road, their branches clawing at the mist of hardly any leaves. They seem dead and almost like clawing up at the sky. Uh, You walk and walk for probably a couple miles, and then all of a sudden um, in the distance, you see what appears to be a village. Um... You get closer and closer, and as you approach the village, you see tall shapes looming out of the dense fog that surrounds everything. The muddy ground underfoot gives way to slick, wet cobblestones. The tall shapes become recognizable as village dwellings. The windows of each house stare out from pools of blackness. 
No sound cuts the silence except for mournful sobbing that echoes to the streets from a distance. So you guys walk into this town and you see buildings everywhere. A lot of them run down, decrepit, kind of leaning to one side, broken windows, boarded up. Um, it, this place is just devastatingly sad. And you guys do hear wailing coming somewhere from somewhere in the village. I would like to head towards the, the wailing, but I would I... like to uh, keep my... I, I've, I've switched to uh, my greatsword at this point. Since okay. I feel more comfortable. I walk with that. next to Kinsley. And uh, I I just I'm prepared to attack if anything comes after I'm, us. I'm I'm pretty much right behind Francisco. I'm standing behind everyone because my thought process is wailing. Well something wailing could also still try to kill me, so <laughs> Wail, wail, wail. So you guys uh, are walking westward through this town. Um, as you guys are walking, you see uh, pairs of eyes kind of like look in between the slits. And as soon as they see you look over, they cover it up like here and there. Uh, Can I you tell walk... if they're human or humanoid? Um, they look like human eyes. Like you can't really tell because they're hidden behind like in like in the houses, like with the slats. They're looking out the slats in the windows and whatnot from the boards that are covering. Uh, you guys keep walking your way. Eventually, you see uh, a big building on your right side and um, a slightly smaller one on the left at a crossroads in the middle of the town. The wailing is coming from the south, so you guys turn left and you start walking down. Um, you go down a couple houses, and there on your left side is, is a building, and you can hear someone in the top upstairs uh, crying and sobbing. Okay, everybody... Um, I am concerned. I stop everyone before we get too close. Okay. We have just come out of a terrible battle. I'm, I mean, I'm okay on how I feel, but do we really want to start poking around when, I mean, how is everybody on, on, how does everybody feel? Like if we were to go into a battle right now, <laughs> How how would you all do? You know, uh, I, I should we maybe okay. fine. Can I? I could use a rest, honestly. Please. Right. Um, do we want to, in that case, approach this wailing building and maybe get into trouble or find somewhere to? No. I don't know. Maybe save this for after we have a night's rest, since you know. We just fought the terrible creature spider thing. I almost and some died. of you, yeah, a couple of you, you know, it was. Uh, yes, I guess fine. we could sit down for a couple of minutes, collect ourselves. What, what time is it? I so to you guys end. got back um, in like uh, late afternoon, I want to say in Fandolin. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't super late. It's probably evening now, but like early evening. I think that we should probably find maybe an inn or scout somewhere to camp, depending on how an inn looks here. I don't know. It is a pretty terrible place we've come into. Um, DM, yeah. how does this wailing sound? Does it sound humanoid or does it, it does. sound... It okay. sounds humanoid and it sounds distress. In that I mean, case. Francisco, if you are really keen on finding out if this is a terrible, you know, I don't know. Maybe in this go case, in okay. Francisco Can turns I? into Shakira mode and begins walking towards the wailing. Can I can himself as beautiful and comfortable looking. He doesn't do like Comforting, hot and intimidating. Like he does motherly, like a com matronly. Yeah, yeah. A matron, so, a matronly Shakira. Yeah. You so, know, uh, not we... not Super Bowl Shakira because that's you know those little. But... Like a Zootopia <laughs> one when she's yeah. talking to the news people. Yeah. Like, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, my home. So, I want everybody uh, to can be happy. We, 
can we tell where in the building this is coming yes, from? Yes, you're you can tell it is tower. coming from one of the it's the upper stories, the second story. All, All right. of these houses are like two, maybe three story. Most of them are just little two story houses. Just concerned that right. it's like the first thing we hear on the other side of town. So... And now all of us are like that is a pretty loud and horrible and I mean I don't have too much experience with ghosts, but as far as I remember the like, next stories, I'm pretty good at luring people to them. I Are don't you know. going in, Francisco? Yes, I I, okay. I, I go to the door. I go through. to the door and, and I, I knock on the door. Oh dear, uh, I'm standing back. There's oh, no. there's no response. You just continue to hear the crying and wailing coming from upstairs. Can I see if there's anybody around? You don't see anyone. Is is this hey. house boarded up as well? So Hello? the windows are boarded up, yeah, but it doesn't appear that like doors are locked or anything. Like you try the handle and it opens just fine. Excuse me. So uh, Francis. <laughs> okay. Go. So you you walk inside. You see a very disheveled home. Um, broken old furniture, maybe a, a, a moth-eaten rug in the middle of the floor. It just looks like an extremely impoverished and sad sight. Um, as you walk in, you see to your left, there are a set of stairs that go up and hit a platform and go up again to the upper story. And you hear the crying, and it is, it's is—it's—it's just louder. I'm I, following him in. I begin making my way <laughs> upstairs. I call, calling out. Hi. Hello, excuse me. Is some is anybody home? I'm staying outside. Okay. So you staying walk up the too. stairs and you go up and you see that there's a little hallway. Um, there are two two rooms up here. You walk down to the end of the hallway uh, where there you see a woman. Um, she is on the ground. She is on her knees and there is this weird doll thing in her hands. It looks like a really um, malformed doll where things are like different proportions and she's sitting there and she's crying just just wailing to herself just just so inconsolable um, and but she looks like a regular human like there do does dolls. not seem to be anything wrong with her excuse me uh, dear are, are you okay is everything all right <laughs> she's she's good my poor Gertrude is gone. I, I don't oh, no. Excuse me. Can, uh, who's gone? I, I didn't quite catch that. My daughter, Gertrude. Oh, no. My poor daughter. She's run away, and I don't know where she went. She's been gone. She's She's been gone a whole week. I want to insight check this woman. I feel what? bad doing it, but I want to insight her. Nope. Go Dolls, for it. it's, 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 what's his face? Ooh, Hi that's hyper. a natural 19 uh, plus the, my the insight, doll. which is 7, so 26. You are getting no evil vibe from this woman at all. You are getting the vibe that this is a very sad woman who lives in a sad place in a very sad town, and she has just lost the only thing in her life. That is what you get seeing this woman on the ground holding this very weird looking doll. It's the doll is weird. Like it's it's my size Barbie like doll. Like it's, I still have mine. Yeah, it's like it's, it's pretty large. <laughs> like it's, her hair, but... but it's just weird looking like it's it's a weird looking doll. And she's sitting there on the ground. She's like, my my poor Gertrude. This this was the doll I gave her. It was mine. <laughs> I got it from my mother and and I came home and she was gone. I, I, I kneel next to her and kind of slowly put my hand on her shoulder. Yeah, I'm already kind of like rubbing her back uh, to try and comfort her. She, uh, I'm outside playing a game of spit. <laughs> Just passing the ball. Yes. I'm outside <laughs> making flowers grow in the corner just because I have nothing else to do. Me, give me give me a nature check with disadvantage. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ooh. I really hope this doesn't have to turn out We've like that. We've got like a Pied Piper deal going on or something. <laughs> uh, is it nature check? Yeah, with disadvantage. Uh, so I rolled a five and then a 12, so that's a six. So you can't 
the only thing you produce are these weird, nasty vines. That's all that come up. Weird, thorny vines that just kind of like, like parasitically grab onto the side of the house. Like Ooh, nothing beautiful bad. at all. Brothers you did, Grimm. You did bad stuff, man. No. We're in the Brothers Grimm movie with Keith Letter. So <laughs> I, I kind of like it. I try to collect it. Uh, it, it, you try to touch it and it pricks you and your fingers bleeding. Like, like it's, it won't, like, as you try to grab it, it moves and it won't let you touch it. I try to drop some, I put drops of blood on it to see if it reacts to it. Nope, doesn't do anything. All right. Did I just Me make, see more? A car I see more. <laughs> did I just make a carnivorous plant? <laughs> so I, as, so I'm sitting uh, there like rubbing her back. Yeah, I'm trying to get. How do you know she ran away? Because she would be in this room. I, I am a terrible mother. I, I've kept her locked here her whole life. Because, Barovia is such a, such a dark and, and dreary and terrible place. I did not want her to be. I did not want her to see how sad it was. I wanted her to be happy. <laughs> but now she's gone. I will never see her again. One of those, one of those evil things probably got her. What the? What evil the, things. Uh, uh, wait, uh, first of all, uh, where are it, we? What is? Uh, what is the name of this place? You are in Barovia. Barovia. You are not from mm -hmm. here. No. She looks up at Kinsley and. Realization is on her face that you look like a monster, and because oh. she's just like wide eyed, so confused, she doesn't say anything because now she is terrified. Like, no, 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 I pull away. It, it is okay. She is, she has not, she has nothing to be afraid of. It is all are, right. Are you, you are not from here, you. You do not, you, you, you're not working for the devil. The devil? Uh, why would we, why would we be working for the devil? Is there a devil here? Strat. He is the devilish vampire that, that curses this land. If you are not, if you are not here as his allies, are you his enemies? Uh, please, well, please leave. I, I, I cannot have anything good or bad uh, that deals with Strat. He will, he will send his wolves and his zombies to take me. Please will, leave. Please leave. She starts pushing you. She starts uh, trying to push you out the door and down the, the stairs. I, 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 I stand firm. I stand my ground and resist being pushed. I like. I, do not, I, I do not, stand I, behind I, 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 Francisco. Like, I, I put my hands on her shoulders and I look into her eyes and I say, Madame, we are not here to harm you. We are only here to help. But I need you to tell me what are these creatures you spoke of? And then we will leave. I promise She's I delirious. give my words. She is just sobbing. She's like, you don't understand. He will kill me. He okay, will kill I, I now embrace her. She's just She's trying to escape. Um, give me a strength, uh, a opposed strength check. Okay. Kinsley is just trying so hard not to cry again. Uh, I got a 16. She got a four. So you have this woman, this terrified, petrified, sobbing woman just struggling, trying to get away from Okay, you. I start like stroking her hair and i start trying to sing to her like a lullaby that my mom taught me <laughs> <laughs> give me a persuasion check but get do it a disadvantage because she is so like you guys do not understand how bad it is here and then how terrible oh, it not, is a roll okay oh those aren't good uh that's an 11 <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not gonna do it. She just keeps wailing and it begs you to leave. I... Can we hear this downstairs? Yeah, yeah you guys, I... you guys hear more wailing and crying, and I'm you hear, sure. please, please, please. 
I'm not sure whether or not I should leave these strange thorns here and go help or make sure they don't destroy I things. Have... As after a, a, a little bit, me, those thorns actually die. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm going to hey. cast sleep on her. Okay. And I got 21. Yeah, so she passes out and you now have this limp woman in your arms, Francisco. Okay, I I look for a bed nearby and I just I lay her down in the bed. Okay, yeah, you find one. There is a bed in this room. It appears to be that this was um, a girl's room, a young girl's room. Um, not a little girl, but uh, it. I mean, I guess you can't really tell because it's so decrepit and so sad. There's like nothing in here. You lay her down on this old bed with with tattered uh, sackcloths for blankets. Okay. Uh, what is taking you so long? Are you dead yet? <laughs> no. Hey, hey, I am working here, okay? I can you, see, you see Francisco I pokes his... He, he busts through one of the, one of the uh, windows <laughs> that has a thing. He pokes his head out. I am working here. <laughs> <laughs> I go marching in the house. <laughs> Uh, I start. I start. I'm. I want to investigate the room. Like this. Okay. I'm assuming this is the girl's room, and I want to see if I can find anything that would indicate why she would leave. If there appeared well, to be some kind of struggle or something, or maybe. She okay. Was so give me investigation checks. I will help. Okay. So either what do it with advantage, Francisco, or both of you roll their own. Mm -hmm. It's roll. a negative one. I <laughs> have a plus four. So okay. I will assist you. <laughs> okay. So give me an investigation check. Uh, it's 15. 15. Well, you don't see any sign of struggle. Um, you don't see anything that would indicate that she was kidnapped. Um, you kind of investigate the doll that was laying on the ground after the lady dropped it to figure out what was going on with these strange people in front of her. Um, and you see that there is a little uh, tag underneath uh, the dress of the uh, thing. And it says, uh, is no fun, is no blinsky. That's just what it says on the tag. Um, but other than that, it just looks like a very sad room. I come up into the room. Okay. What so you... is... Do I see the woman on the bed? Yes, you do. <clears throat> She's just sleeping. She's asleep, but we... Uh, we so... I, I promised that we didn't hurt her. It was magic. So I put, what is going on? I wouldn't have let him hurt her. Yes, I, thought, I, I wouldn't have allowed could, myself okay, to Kizzy, hurt him. I know you wouldn't let anything happen to her. I, it, it's just awkward. I was hearing this wailing and the sadness, and then all of a sudden there was no sadness then. Her daughter and is gone. Then I come gone. up and what? Her daughter is gone. Don't know how or why or she thinks that she ran away. I start looking around. And any sign, anything, this is triggering. Okay, go ahead and give me another memories. investigation check. She was talking about a, a strad, uh, zombies, wolves. Nothing more. Well, I uh, suppose that the only thing that we can do right now is probably uh, go to an inn, hopefully, and find... Uh, more information from them is the only thing I can think of doing. Possibly a rest now since it is starting to get, get on in the evening. He didn't want to talk to us. I don't think oh. anybody else. Those who have... He wouldn't. So what are you guys doing? Uh, I guess like I head downstairs and uh, I find me and I say to me, let's go find somewhere to stay. And um, uh, yes, that's that's all we can do. Okay. Yeah, I so, like that. I, I'm, I'm still in the room looking at the mom. Does I'm someone really have a window Francisco. open or something? I'm outside. I do. I do. Oh, oh, oh you I, mean I, I, other. Okay. Wait, okay, that's fine. There... I just I just hear whooshing and whooshing and yeah. whooshing. That's all. I but that's oh, I okay. No, I know you guys are in 105 degree weather, so people can deal. 
So, uh, uh, so you guys Justin, have been no, at home, y'all. We're in 105 yeah. degree weather. I'm, I'm yeah. not gonna have heat stroke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. no. Uh, so, so you guys walk downstairs, um, and you see as you are leaving, you notice that the door has like a plethora of ways that it is locked. Um, are you just walking outside? I want to look at the mom before I go. Okay. I'm kind of waiting. I waiting for, for, for Imran. Okay, so Imran Lear, you take a look at the woman. Uh, the way that Kinsley and Francisco laid her down is she is face up. She is wearing essentially like hooded sack cloth um, with a brown type robe. Um, she has like a green headband underneath of the sackcloth hood, dark uh, brown hair with gray all inside. She's got um, ponytails that kind of go down into the robe. Um, and she looks worse for wear. Um, if she looks like she could be youngish, like um, maybe 40s, but her face is so creased and um, has so many lines from from fear and from uh just stress in life she looks like she's either 40 or 70 you can't even tell um but she just looks very sad i take a cloth from my pocket put a little water on it clean her face okay she doesn't stir <sighs> I wonder if my mama cried like that. <clears throat> Let's go. Okay. So you guys go downstairs. Um, where to? What are you doing? We need to I the boys. am looking for the an inn. hand. Yep. I am okay. also looking for an inn. And um, so you guys go out I'm the front door. Do you close it? Um, yeah, we I would say yeah. we close the door. Close the door. Yeah, and put all up all the locks and just okay. make sure it seems like we weren't there. Yeah, she was very of, yeah. paranoid about us being there. I didn't I wanted to, but I didn't leave anything, you know. All the locks are locked. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you guys start walking um you come out of the house and you turn right, you start walking north back up to the path. Um, you see the first big building you pass is on the right hand side um, and you see uh, sparse light from this building spills out from behind drawn heavy curtains. There's a sign over the door creaking on its hinges that reads Bill Drath's Mercantile. Um, you look further north um, across the cross street um, and you see another building it's quite a bit bigger um, it has a, a single shaft of light thrusts uh, illumination into the main square so this is one of the only buildings that actually has light coming out of it uh, it's brightness uh, looking like a solid pillar in the heavy fog uh, above the gaping doorway a sign hangs precariously ask askew proclaiming this to be the blood on the vine tavern but that's what I, you see in your immediate area. I, I turn to uh, me and Imra and I say, they don't seem <clears throat> to appreciate the uh, strangers or I should say outsiders here. I am worried that perhaps we should pretend that we are from this country. At least. Where are we though? We're oh. in a place called uh, Barovia. 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 Yes. Francisco, give me an intelligence check. Oh boy, I'm great at those. <laughs> that's a 12. A 12? Okay, that's uh, you can that's fine. Uh all you needed was a 10. So, you think back to how the woman as soon as she saw Kinsley, her eyes lit up. Maybe they are not used to non-human humanoids in this town. So, regardless, they're gonna probably know you're not from here. Uh, we don't have a way of disguising your ears, Kinsley, perhaps. Um, She's covered in fur. The, yeah. Uh, we get genetic disorder? What's wrong with the way she looks? I don't oh, She's beautiful. Yeah. There's nothing uh, wrong with the way she looks. What um, is going on? 
Um, so uh, these people are not used to non-human, no, uh, non-human types. She saw me. Types. She was frightened. I don't see what's frightening about you. You look like a little wide-eyed doe who just wants to have a munch on her marshmallows. I don't know what's going on. Who's standing on two legs and speaking? Your she face very is much too sweet to be considered scary. I'm sorry. Mm. There's nothing scary about you. I get the feeling they're not used to seeing or have maybe never seen someone like me. And that by itself would be unnerving. Yes, Imra, it, it isn't necessarily, and necessarily what you think. It is what other people think. That is what is concerning. I don't care what other people think and I go through the end. Okay, ah. so you walk towards the tavern or whatever it is. Yeah. Happen. So you get you walk towards the tavern. Uh, you go up. Uh, you walk up these. There's like two or three steps that lead up to like a, a, a porch, and you walk through the doors. Uh, walking inside, you see that it is just a small looking tavern. Um, I mean, large for the town, but as far as other uh, taverns you've been to go, it looks relatively small. Um, you see that there is a barkeep who looks human uh, behind the counter. Um, you see looking around that there is also a gentleman sitting by himself in the back corner in a booth. Um, and then kind of near you guys near the door, there are three other uh, humans sitting there. Um, uh, do, 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 you see, I believe it's um, two men and a woman. I go towards the barkeep. You okay? So he's sitting there, kind of like glossy eyed, just cleaning a cup. Doesn't even look at you, just standing there cleaning a cup. Do you have rooms? This is a tavern. Do you know where I can get rooms? We serve drinks. I am asking. If there is a place in this awful town that has rooms. He doesn't answer. What a waste of time. I leave. So as you turn around to leave, the guy in the corner waves his hand and he's like, ah, oh, hello, friends. Uh, I didn't go into the town. Yeah, I'm staying outside I'm with Kinsley. Okay. I'm, I'm outside with Kinsley. The... <laughs> well, he I'm, I'm sitting here trying door. to like get a hood over her head and <laughs> yeah. trying to find a way to make it so she can hide her. She's ears. more inconspicuous. Yeah, so, more so inconspicuous. this guy is sitting by one of the windows that are there, and he waves over, and he's like, "Ah, hello, friend. Come sit by me, have a drink, and tell your friends outside to come as well." I'm not interested in drinks. I am interested in finding a place for my friends to sleep. Is there well, a place for them to sleep? There's no inn in the village of Barovia. Come and sit and talk with me for a while. And maybe I can help you find a place to stay. I'm trying to be hospitable. I'm sure you have noticed it's not very hospitable in this town. I'm not a very hospitable person. Well, but... then you will fit in just fine. Hmm. He yells over. He goes, Eric, bring me two pitchers of wine. I don't He's... drink. More for me. At the, at the word wine, can I see if I hear this word? <laughs> He's yelling. So, yeah, I mean, make a perception All check. Right. See if it's loud enough to hear. Well, what's even your passive per perception? Oh, oh yeah. I'm sure He's, like, actively listening for me. Yeah, yeah what, uh, what's your my passive, passive perception? My passive perception is 15. Oh, yeah, you definitely hear it. I come in. <laughs> Wine, he said. Yeah, ah, friend, come sit down. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll come over. Francisco, what over. was the name we gave me again? Uh, are you asking uh, Trevor? I'm or Trevor, Francis Trevor, Trevor, Trevor <laughs> was the name <laughs> that we gave. Mephisto. Mephisto. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> friend, come uh, sit down. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi. I think you have a problem, Mephisto. Uh, what seems what to be the problem? I'm not used to that name. 
Uh, yes, I I sit down. Would you next prefer to him. seaweed? Ah. Mm, that's what I thought. What is are you there, doing? Is there a problem? I'm. I'm, I'm not, not talking it's, to you. It's. No, I'm it's, not going to bite you. No, it it's it's fine. She's um just threatening to call me a plant. <laughs> Well, Anyways, look, I'm, I won't poison wine. you. He he oh, pours no, some fine. wine and he drinks it. And he's like, see, I'd, it's I'd, perfectly fine. It's one, not yes, the best please. stuff, but he's there. He pours I'll you a drink. Mm. Chug it. <laughs> a good drinker. <laughs> Uncle I'm gets so the tired. others. I go out to get Kinsley and Francisco. Okay. As soon as uh, they uh, come in, uh, uh, the man stands up. By the way, when up. she comes to get me, and I hear that a person is, you know, calling for us, I make myself intimidating hot now instead. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys put a thing over Kinsley's face a little bit? We tried. Um, I Did see. You at least I tried. I don't know if she has but, a hood. I mean, I, I, don't I know have if a little hood on my it. on my little thing. I mean, I guess it's up, and my ears are tucked, and. It doesn't, it's not a big hood, so it, like, doesn't go you over my face your cute at deer all. Face. Yeah, it's basically, like, <laughs> it's my hood and a deer face is just <laughs> Coming going out, out of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but it's ball. a cute deer face. She's really pretty, okay? She's so, really pretty. <laughs> Look at my art for it. It is so it pretty. It is, it is gorgeous. Plug Arcana mm. Inc. Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So yeah, so so you guys walk in, and as soon as you guys start walking toward him, this gentleman stands up and he waits for you all to come, and he kind of uh, uh, helps in two chairs, and he looks over at Kinsley, and he's like, "Dear, you don't need to wear that. Go, don't worry about it. Yes, people here do not understand because they are not used to seeing non-humans uh, here in Barovia." We have been apart from the world for so long. Um, usually, those who look different um, are unfortunately not... They are monsters, unfortunately. But you obviously are not. You are not the first set of adventures we have seen in the world. And you are not the first of your kind that we have seen as well. At least most of us. Those of us who actually leave their houses. Barovia is a very sad place. And that is a question that I had for uh, you guys. Why doesn't anyone leave their homes? Because it is not safe. There is an individual who... Uh, rules Barovia, you could say. His name is Stradvan Zurevich. He is a curse on Barovia. Barovians believe that that the Morning Lord uh, cursed our ancestors for some wrongs they did long ago, uh, and and Strad is that curse. He is a vampire. He has many monsters and many minions that feed and terrorize everyone in Barovia. So, naturally, when we see someone who is different, we are scared. But no one will do anything to you for being different. They just might be scared. There's no point in hiding your face. They will know. You are taller. For crying out loud, you have fur. I mean, what are you going to do? Hide your face and not let anyone see your pretty eyes? I mean, at least you don't look threatening. You put on a hood and you look threatening. This little green one, though, that one's interesting. Mm. See, so yeah, a spit's kind of sitting down there, his feet's dangling. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and um, well, he is practically harmless, unless you get on our bad side and he gets a little bit feisty, but. Yes, well, I hope I never have to cross swords with him. I'm a bit of a fighter myself, uh, but I am not one to go against adventurers who show up in Barovia. They tend to be extremely strong. 
Um, but if first comes to verse, I will protect those I love. I am so rude. I am sorry. Uh, and I never introduced myself. I am uh, Ismark Kolyanovic. You can just call me Ismark. Don't worry about the last name. In Barovia, everyone says the last name because it kind of tells you who their father is. Uh, my father is the burgomaster of this town. Uh, his name is Kolyan. Kolyan. I'm sorry. I forgot my father's name for a second. <laughs> uh, his name is Kolyan. And so my last name is Kolyanovic. Say his name, the first name. Uh, this guy's name or yes. the... Okay, this guy's name is Ismark. I-S-M-A-R-K. But he says Ismark. And he's the son of the guy who's what? So Out of the town? Burger I, master. I am the son of the Burgo master. What Burger. is... <laughs> it's the thing uh, that last so... time we played... Jessica, he kept calling the Burgermeister. <laughs> hey, I was calling the him the Burgermeister because I didn't know what the heck that was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so a Burgermeister is, uh, yeah. he is the one who looks over the town. He is in charge. Um, is it like a mayor? What's a mayor? It is someone who's in charge of the town. Uh, then yes, it is exactly like a mayor. Uh, exactamente, gracias. Mm. What was that? Uh, uh, thank you. He's... Sorry. Oh, uh, very interesting. I like. I like it a lot. Uh, I just do not. Very interesting. How do you know how these adventurers got here? These past mm. adventurers. So, uh, I do not know if you notice lots of fog. There's lots of fog everywhere. Do not go in the fog. Yes, we know that. We, we learned that. that. Yes. Yes, don't do that. Uh, oh, I need to get yeah. you to bed. Don't do that. Yeah. So, um, but so, are people being brought from... Is the fog what brings people here? I do not know. I know that people show up and they cannot leave. No one in Barovia can leave. We have been trapped here for literally centuries so many people uh so so this used to be a very amazing land um and then something happened uh according to uh the borovians our ancestors uh did something wrong they aff offended the gods as a morning lord and uh, he cursed us he cursed us and he brought the vampire here and who trapped us and we have been paying for those sins ever since. Francisco? Francisco? Oh, Man, what is it? Mephist Mephisto. Mephisto. Oh, yes. Your, your, your weapon that you got. Yes. What is, is that, the, was there a god for that or something? Uh, uh, yeah, there is. Yes. It it emits light. He's talking about the light Lathander. god. Lathander. Lathander. Who is, who is this god that was offended? Uh so it was the morning lord. We the have morning lord. Morning lord. Yes, we have. Can I do have a religion Dawn. check on that? Like, yeah. Go ahead and give Lathan me a religion Lathand check. Lathander, the god of dawn. So that. So I've that never heard. One. Morning lord. You have no idea. <laughs> and honestly, I have never heard of Lysander. Lysander. I've never heard. I've I've only ever heard of two gods. There is the Morning Lord who rules over the day, um, and then there is the Mother of Night, and she is who we worship in the evening. Um, unfortunately, we believe that because of our sins, our ancestors' sins, we have been cut off from the Morning Lord. We have. We still have churches that are dedicated to him, and we still pray to him, but those prayers never get answered. Um, Mother Night is a little more present, but uh, prayers here do not get answered very often at all. Do you have actual names for these gods, or do they only go by their title? That is their names. The Mother Night and the Morning Lord. So, not a stay 
I have not heard of Selun. It's a very, very pretty name. I, it, I know for a fact it's not Selun, right? Right, but... You don't know. I don't know? You I mean, natural. you've never you've never heard of Mother Night before, but the fact that Saloon and Mother Night are both evening gods, I mean, you have no idea. That's what Imra's thinking. Yeah. Well, I mean, with Kinsley's Nat One, she she has no idea. She doesn't know. <laughs> Can I make right, right, a religion right. check to see? Francis I'm gonna tell you now. Like, this is a very high DC because this land has been locked away for centuries. You yeah. guys. Do you have a map? That's a five. Yes. Yes. Do you have a map? A map of what? Your, your home, of the world. Uh, In the town. Do you have a map of the town? Of the town? Uh, Well, well, the town's not very big, so no one really draws maps of the town. Um, there are maps of Barovia. Um, Does it include the the surrounding countries or kingdoms or whatever? No. It is just of Barovia. There is not one here, but there is one at the Burgomaster's mansion. We need to get our hands on a map. Well... What happened to the other adventurers who came here? None of them Did they go try to... To go fight this proud person and die? Most of them. Fenris is going to be pissed. I'm pissed. Hey, there's thing about this way. We get the more adventure. I mean, we get the more adventure. Would you like go. more oh. of it? Can I get more more wine, please? Oh, yes, of course. And he pours more wine. Any, anyone else? I've got... Two whole pitchers here. I cannot drink this myself. Um, Another one, please. No, Jeez. I'm trying. I'm trying to cut back. Me, you are already mm. exhausted. Another one. Okay, okay. Uh, well, if uh, no one you are the join one me. who decided to jump into the fog. Eric, uh, Eric, please uh, take take this pitcher. Give it to our friends over there. It's, it's on me. Um, and he looks over at the other three who are at the table, and he waves. Um, On me. They they kind of tip <laughs> they kind of tip their hats. And uh, Eric, the the bartender, comes over. You looking closer at him now that he is walking towards the table, and you see him. He walks very slowly, um, kind of like not all there type of a look type thing. Can I um, do an insight on him to kind of see? Go ahead. See... Yeah. 14. So 14 with a 14, you can tell that he seems, I don't want to say he seems empty. Um, Lack of emotion, um, lack of stuff going on up here. It seems that he Mm -hmm. is very much Mm -hmm. so just serving drinks and that is what he does. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And NPC with no personality. Yep. Straight up, he is an NPC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, but no, I mean, like, you know, in those RPG games where they're uh, literally uh, just there. Yeah, yeah. That's what he is. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's but it's just probably there. because of this curse. One of those NPCs, when you go up and press mm-hmm. A, they have like three words they say yeah. and you can't actually Hello? get a dialogue. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then they say it every single time you press uh, A on them. Hi. Yes, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's yeah that's that's what you get when when uh do inciting uh eric Can i kind of get a feel for the bar is it just him or is it other people too so uh kind of looking around it seems the other guys at the table uh, there's literally you guys and ismark sitting at the, in uh-huh. the booth there is eric or eric um, who is the barkeep. And then there are three people sitting at the table. The three people sitting at the table seem more lively. They seem more, um, uh, they're not talking very loud, but the, the way they move, they don't seem as empty as Eric does. Okay. Here is what needs to happen. We find the map that we can keep and a place to sleep. 
I could just can... copy a map. I'm I'm proficient so, in and I can kind of remember it. I have I have a proposition. You are new here. Welcome to the crappy Barovia, by the way. Um, you have nowhere to stay, no plans, nothing to do. You are trapped oh, no. here. That is a plan. Okay, well, at the moment, uh, it appears you just came into town because you don't even know who Strad is, so uh, give me a moment. He's the bad vampire. Yes, you just found that out. Anyway, anyway. Strad, lately, he has... He has targeted my sister. For some reason, he's attracted to her. I do not know why, but he has been visiting her in the night. He is... I don't know, maybe trying to abduct her or something. Uh, either way, I need to get my sister out of here. I need to get her to one of the other towns in Barovia. Probably somewhere like Valaki. Uh, I hear they are very fortified and a lot of Strad's minions cannot get inside. But my sister is in danger and I need help getting her there. If you guys will be willing to help me, uh, help my sister Ivina, then I will give you a place to stay and I will give you the map. It'll, uh... Let me sleep. Yes. Oh, what? You saw a shaved, scarred up elf with carrying several weapons and decided, hey, she probably has some friends and can go do this for me. No, I do not plan on you doing it for me. I am going as well. This is us leaving. It's another sealed bar. We are leaving because we do not want to live in this saddle of the castle. And he points up. You guys look out the window up there on the hill is a very familiar castle. You see a steep incline like a cliff face. The village is right up against a cliff. And at the very top is the same castle that's on the Taroka card you picked up. Uh, well, it seems that the... Me? Uh, that the vet has brought this here. All your faults. I just wanted to have my virgin told. How old was that now woman's I'm daughter? tired. <laughs> Um, we did, we, we would, were get a able to, to ask. ask. She just started crying a lot. Though I assume she was young. What, she had what a doll. woman? There was a lady with cards. No, I different woman. We did, uh, not okay. the gypsy who teleported us here with her hoodoo. I don't, I look different. The woman in the house I, and that was crying. Oh, I don't know if we should. But what? Oh, you're probably right, ah. Kinsley. Uh, f for this woman's secrecy, we will not say anything. You're probably you're woman. probably talking about Mad Mary anyway. Who is that? She is a lady who lives a couple of houses south of here, down the road, and she's been veiling for the last few well, for the last week. I don't know when why. When did she say her daughter went missing? A week ago. She has a daughter? Yes. And she is probably older than the two of you thought. And this Strad probably spirited her away in the night. Because that's what they do. Well, I don't know about many daughter of Mary's. I know Mary. She is very sad. I mean, everyone in Barovia is. Uh, especially in the village of Barovia. Where we live in the shadow of the castle. But lots of people go missing. It is very common. As sad as it is, it is not as un I mean, it is not as uncommon as you may think. People go mm. missing constantly. And whether it's Strad himself or it's, uh, it's someone else or his, his uh, wolves or his zombies or his vampire spawn. Right, we're dealing with a bunch of undead. Right. I wish I never touched that card. <sighs> Me too. Uh, I think it would have happened anyway. I just wanted... I feel like there is somebody who uh, controls our lives, but I'm not sure... It's good to be. 
But so, I, I proved, I, I'd like to think that we are able to make some choices for ourselves. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> the oh, world is, dumb. your lives, Thank you, the father. <laughs> your lives are controlled by the gods. The gods v will dictate where you go, what you do, when you do it, everything. <laughs> I, do, I, I think that Francisco is, is talking about the one singular god who is, I don't know, more excited to throw us, in, us into the fire than the others. It's almost as if many people are watching us for their entertainment, <laughs> you know. <laughs> ah, a vengeful god. Sounds like Strad. Ah. Uh, is well. Strad a god or a vampire? Well, he might as well be a god. He's been alive for centuries. He rules over god. here. He rules over Barovia, and our gods have stopped talking to us since he arrived. Either he's killed them, or they have cursed us. At that, Kinsley gets up and leaves. And goes outside, like, goes a bit away from the bar and tries to pray. Okay. Perhaps go ahead. Because you don't have faith. And I go like ahead to and follow her. give me a religion check with disadvantage. It's going to be a seven. So you get on your knees and you start praying to Saloon, trying to reach out to her. And you don't hear anything. You have a hard time. You have a hard time feeling any sense of presence. You are able to still cast holy magic. But as far as your connection to your God, it seems as if there's some something in the way. I followed her out. Anything? Not a lot. You cast your magic before, yes? Magic you get from your god. So, whatever this place is, all it's done is put cotton in your ears. We have to pluck out the cotton. I hope you're right. Do not lose your faith. While you guys are out there, go ahead and give me perception checks. That I can do. 14. 22. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I would like to note that DM last time said, uh, don't roll your, your dice before you get great rolls. Didn't roll my dice before. Haven't gotten. I've gotten I one good roll. Mine's been Sorry. average. <laughs> Mine, mine have been in. Mine are just good. Anyway, so <laughs> Kinsley. I also didn't roll before. Wait, it does. As, as you are sitting there, kind of in despair, um, realizing that your god has not forsaken you, but has been cut off by something. Um, so it is very hard to reach. Um, as you are sitting here contemplating this, you look over and you see this crouched over little person um, with a little cart and they are walking from door to door and they're knocking on the door a lot of the houses don't answer this is way down the street i'm not um, gonna make the joke it's just knocking on doors once in a while someone will answer um and you see that this little p person is exchanging something and then the people inside are giving them uh, something in return. Eventually, this person gets to a house. They knock on a door, and you see that there are parents there holding a child. And the little person that's handing out stuff um, is getting animated. Um, and you hear cries from what here appears to be from the mother of the child. The, the person now has the child. 
um, has put it into a sack, put it on its cart, and is walking away down the street. I shoot it. So go ahead and oh, don't hit the I've make an attack roll. Run, I've started. It's running. in a bag. I shoot uh, well, it through the freaking. Head. As soon as as soon as you shoot, um, it is a second too late. The person has walked down. Uh, to walk in between houses. This was like in between houses on the other side. Kinsley saw this and earlier you did not. Right. So this is what you saw Kinsley kind of in between um, and in between houses. So uh, if you want to do anything. I don't really have anything. I I see you. Uh, did, did I see any? No, this was a high DC because this is on the other side of town in between well, like, houses. Uh, did I notice Kinsley like looking in a direction? Uh, I don't know. Did you? I mean, were you looking at, Kin uh, at Kinsley? Yes, I was having a okay, conversation then, with her. So then, yeah, you you would have noticed her looking in a direction. What's going on? Uh, someone just took a baby. What? Which way? Uh, uh, I, I point. I misty step over there. Okay, and... it is way more than 30 feet. Ah. It is like, uh, like I said, almost the other side of town. Oh. And it Sorry. was in between houses that she saw. She saw the person kind of walk in between houses and then knocking on doors. So, Kinsley, you were kind of like looking back and forth. I start running in that direction then. Okay, so uh, I'm give following me, her. both of you give me perception checks. I need Dang to pop it. up something. Uh, did, uh, would I have been in a position to notice them running away, or would, would I have been too busy talking to this dude? You were too busy talking unless you followed him outside. Because no, since, no I didn't. I words. didn't. Yeah, since Emra... Are you wondering, like, if there was a window or something, I would have The seen. moment Emra left, I, like you know, indicated for the guy with the wine. And I'm like, another one. <laughs> another mm. one. Yeah, ah. it keeps giving you more wine. Ah. What did you get, Emre Lear? A D2. For your perception? Uh-huh. Okay, so you see, you do see this individual, um, but the individual notices they're being followed. So... Can I stealth it? Well, I guess I wouldn't be stealthing. Yeah, not if you're booking it. No, um, no. Let's see. Give me an opposed dexterity check real quick. Uh, just a check? Yeah, uh, yeah, just a check, not a saving throw. 11. 11. So this person is able to round a corner before you get there. Um, as soon as you get close, you look around the corner and don't see him. I will give you one more chance. Give me another perception check. A nat That's one. one. Yes. Uh, sometimes he gives me 20s. Sometimes he doesn't. So this individual seems to have slipped away. Why did they go? I like run up after her. Not as fast. I'm not going to let this. <sighs> we go talk to the parents. You didn't have any success with the woman before, correct? No. Is there a chance that they would talk to us? Not with the way that I look, but I could change it for a short time. Are you okay with that? Of course. Right. Let's go see if we can get any information. I am not okay with children being taken from their families. Before we walk out, I'm assuming, are we like in an alley? Yeah, so you guys would have rounded the corner. You're like in between houses at the moment, um, but you can you can walk back, Kinsley. You could remember about where the house was. Okay, then I'm going to um, disguise self 
and I'm going to appear to be like two feet shorter or a half, maybe like a foot and a half shorter. So I'm only like five, five, um, still have the really, really blonde hair, but little tanned skin and the brown eyes, basically okay. a human version of Tinsley. Okay. Right. We go over to the, uh, well, she will have to leave me because I didn't see exactly where Okay. I am. So you guys go back to where, Kinsey, you know the house is. You're able to pick out which one it is because you now hear crying coming from inside. Um, and you knock on the door, and all of a sudden the, the, the crying stops, and it gets quiet. And then as you sit there and wait, the door creaks open, and you see... A slender man's face looking out. He's like, What is it? What do you want? I want to know what that creature was. Do not worry about her. Do not worry about us. Please go away. I, put, I, I put my foot in the door. What? Please. What is the creature? She is a lady. She she comes around. She delivers things to... Why did she take your child? Because we could not pay. Pay hey, what? Here. The lady, she comes by. She delivers these pastries to people. They are an escape. They help us. Help us feel better. We begged her last time she came by for some and told her we would pay her when she came by and we did not have anything to pay. She took our child because we could not pay for some. Please leave us alone so we can sit in our wallows and think about what we've done. Do you know where she goes? I have no idea. She comes, she goes, she disappears. She's only here when she sells her damned pastries. I leave. I guess I follow. Oh, pastries. <laughs> this is a terrible place. And these are all terrible people. Giving up their child, risking. They knew what was going to happen. I'm sure it's not the first time. The irresponsibility just to feel good for one evening. I don't want to stay. Are you guys heading back to the tavern? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys make all, your way back. All while they were doing that, I was um, asking uh, Ismark some questions. Okay. What did you have? Um, so we are in the city of Barovia, but this is also the country of Barovia, correct? Correct. So the country of Barovia engulfs everything. This village was where it started um, according to the Barovian histories uh, this town was called Barovia um, and then the rest of Barovia was named later I don't know lots of lots of history has been lost uh, what I can tell you is that this is the village of Barovia uh, there is two other vis villages throughout Barovia one of them is Veleki Veleki. And, uh, Veleki, yes. Uh, that is uh, kind of central. It is uh, close to one of the lakes uh, that is in Barovia. Let me pop, up, pop open my map real quick. So it is near uh, Lake Zarovich. Uh, it's surrounded by very high walls. Uh, I believe. I, I know it is fortified. That is what I've heard anyway. I've 
in all honesty, not very many people in the villages travel outside of the villages, so I myself have never been there. Um, and then there is one more village that is on uh, the western part of Barovia called Kresk. Uh, Kresk is a smaller, um, very shut in. I know, excuse me. I know within uh, the village of Kresk, uh, there is uh, the Abbey of St. Markovia. Um, it is one of the uh, holy places within Barovia. Um, extremely holy. I mean, most sit towns have a, have a church. We even have a church here. Um, but it is a small one and it is dedicated to the Morning Lord. Um, we have a priest, uh, uh, Donovich. He is our local priest. Um, but lots of people avoid the church nowadays. Um, now, what so, was his name? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Uh, uh, the priest? His name is Donovich. Donovich. And uh, where could uh, we find him, perhaps? Probably at the church. He is there all the time. Um... I actually planned on going there this evening. Um, you are welcome to join me, but first I I have to get to the the, the mansion. Uh, I need to check in with my sister. That is all right with me. I just have a couple of questions for uh, a man of faith. I have a, about certain things. Okay. So and as us, yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry, no, um, if you have more questions, go for them. Yes, and um, your sister. Um, when do you think Strad would want her? What 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 would he want with her? Any idea? Any at all? Is she I beautiful? Mean, is she healthy? Is she? She, she is. She is beautiful. She is healthy. Um, I mean, she is only my half sister, so it's not weird if I call her beautiful. Or not half sister. She's my adopted sister. Uh. Um, she she uh, is a great woman. Uh, she works really hard. She's I, I don't know why she has been singled out by Strad. Um, uh, uh, she um, perhaps very strong. Perhaps she can fight. Uh, she is a good warrior. Kind, yes. mm -hmm. Pose some kind of threat to Strad. No one poses a threat to Strad. Um, I have heard tell that in the past Strad has picked out women that he likes and um, wants them to be a part of his life, I guess. I don't know if you could call it a life. Uh, I know that my sister has been targeted. He has visited her. He has bitten her. He has not turned her. She does not remember most of... Uh, she does not remember most of his visits. It is fuzzy. She says the only thing she really remembers is his eyes. His uh, a burning passion in his eyes. Burning passion in his eyes. That is disconcerting. I think I will stay a woman. Uh. Uh. Yes, my sister. stay a woman? You gonna what? stay a woman? Uh, yes. <laughs> hey. So, so as you guys, uh, as is Mark and Francisco are finishing up this conversation, um, Kinsley and Emrelier walk back in, um, and uh, is Mark is standing up. He's like, so, um, would you all accompany me to the mansion? Uh, I need to check in with my sister and your friend here would like to check out the church and I need to go there this after this evening anyway. The woman with the pastries. Was she out there? Yeah, she's like a baby. She is a curse upon this town. She comes and she sells her drug-filled pastries that cause visions, visions that do not last, 
that make people feel good about themselves, that makes them feel like they are somewhere besides here in Barovia. They essentially make your most basic desires happen in front of your eyes. They bring you to a place of happiness. I do not blame the people of Barovia for giving in to this desire, but at the same time, it is extremely sad. They are trading their children for it. These people have nothing. They have their families. Well, unfortunately, family bonds are not as strong here as they should be. That is why I try to keep my family safe. My sister is in danger. If you care about family, help me protect mine. I will help you figure out what you need to do to maybe get out of here if you can. I mean, I don't know. I do have one last question before we help you. Do you know anything about uh, these wolves or perhaps more specifically about uh, werewolves, uh, those who can turn into man beasts? I have heard of werewolves. Um, we do not see many of them uh, in the village of Barovia. Uh, from what I hear, they spend a lot of time uh, more so on the west side um, of Barovia. Uh, but, I mean, they are around. They are terrible. They are... Uh, they raid uh, caravans. They steal things. They... From what I heard, they are also uh, children nabbers. All right. Thank you. So will well, you, then, will you yes, come with me? I look, cannot speak for my companions, but I will help you and your sister. He looks over at me, sees that me's drunk, <laughs> decides not to ask. And then looks over at Imrilir and Kinsley. I Who understand is this a is a human right now. Yeah. Oh, I, I he he assumes he's more yeah. intuitive than like people give him credit for. Uh, but he he looks at you and he's like, "I am sorry you are here. This is literally the last place I would ever ask anyone to be. But you are here. I will help if I can." But I also need help. And no one, no one in Barovia can do it. I am afraid that if I go alone with my sister, Strad will take her. We are outside of our homes. We are very vulnerable. I don't know if you know much about vampires. But what we know is they cannot come into a dwelling unless they are invited. So as long as she is home, she is mostly safe. I don't know how he got to her before. But the moment we leave, I cannot protect her on my own. I will surely die. I will do it. Because I love her. There's nothing else we can do. We cannot stay here. I don't think anyone should be here. I agree. This reminds me of home. Mm, I still have so many questions about your past, Mephisto. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll put that aside for now. We will make the most of us being here and we will help where we can okay. i do not feel good about this place but i feel like we were brought here for a reason okay so uh is mark nods and he walks over to eric at the uh counter he holds up two silver pieces um and he actually shows holds it up so the guys in the front sitting at the table can see slaps it down on the counter and then walks out um you guys following him Yep. Okay. Uh, 
So he is starting to lead you to the southern part of town where the Burgomaster Mansion is, but it is about that time where we need to take a break. Yay. Yay. Keep breaking. Break. Yeah, so uh, everyone at home, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying it so far. This it's campaign intense. is going to be so much more dark. So dark. So I love it. Yeah. So hopefully so you're enjoying it. <laughs> um, so we will be back in about 10 minutes. It's about 7.40 now, so 7.50. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Please stick around, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. So uh, right where we left off, uh, Ismark is taking you guys uh, to the Burgomaster's uh, home. He takes the southern road that uh, you guys have been on before. You walk past the uh, store. You keep going down a couple houses, and you see that there is Mary's home. Uh, Ismark told you that uh, the lady's name is Mary. Um, and you keep walking and walking and walking, and out in front of you, um, you start to see coming, uh, coming into view a mansion. You see a wary looking mansion squats behind a rusting iron fence. The iron gates are twisted and torn. The right gate lies cast aside, while the left swings lazily in the wind. The stuttering squeal and clang of the gate repeats with mindless precision. Weeds choke the grounds and press with menace upon the house itself. Yet against the walls, the growth has been tramped down to create a path all about the domain. Heavy claw markings have stripped the once beautiful finish of the walls. Great black marks tell of, a fi of fires that have assailed the mansion. Not a pane nor a shard of glass stands in any window. All the windows are barred with planks, each one marked with stains of evil omen. So Ismark takes you guys through uh, the gate to this shambled, very destroyed looking mansion. Um, and he knocks on the door. And uh, he, I want you to guys... insight check him real quick. This Go ahead. Yeah. Make sure he's not leading us to my day. Yeah, I make, will make, also... make an insight check. Yeah. <laughs> That's can, I, can I insight I'm just sitting him here as like... well, even though I'm drunk? Whoever wants to insight, do it at disadvantage me. Yeah. I got a 14. I got a 10. I got a. Uh, Ooh! Insight! Ooh, I'm not woo. really good today. Ooh, what the? Dirty uh, 20! That's, that's nice. an eight. So whether you rolled high or low, um, you guys figure that this house looks like all the other houses. Um, the only real difference between this one and the others is it looks like it has more claw marks, more like weird things as if um, monsters and animals have uh, gone after the house itself, um, more so than the other villagers. Uh, but uh, having heard his Mark's story and sat and talk with him, um, he doesn't give off anything that shoots red flags. So he goes up to the door and he knocks on it. Um, and you guys hear a voice from inside. Who is it? Irina, it is me. It's Ismark. Let, let, let me in. I have, uh, I have guests with me. Okay. Um, you see that a, a slit in the door moves open, and she kind of looks out. You see one eye. It's open barely enough just so someone could look out real quick, and she closes it. She's like, okay, okay, uh, give me one second. And you hear, like, she's moving this big something across the door, and you hear shink. <laughs> as if she's unlocking all these different locks and then the door swings open and you guys see uh irina irina is a beautiful woman uh dark auburn hair tan skin uh she's wearing um like a red uh scarf that kind of goes back but she's also wearing like chest plate type stuff um, and gar vanguards down her arms or arm guards. Uh, she's got a sword at her side um, and wearing just regular, regular pants. Um, closer inspection, you can see that she's got bite marks on her neck. Um, but she looks okay. She doesn't look like anything's wrong with her. She doesn't have pale skin. Um, 
it looks like you know maybe she's just been bitten a couple times um a couple of times she's got two sets so uh she's like come in come in quickly um and ismark comes in you guys follow inside Go you, inside, you, yeah, you guys follow? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking. Yeah. Oh, I so thought you, guys... you just said you follow inside. Me, no. Me's <laughs> like kind of looking at the plants outside. And so he, he's a little slow on the uptake, but he follows eventually. <laughs> You're looking at the weeds? <laughs> yeah. Why are the plants so mean here? Zed, nothing survives here, my friend. I am sorry. I mean, even the trees. I mean, there are evergreens. They never really die, though. Um, other than that, uh, there are trees, but very little leaves. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Welcome to Barovia. They're uh, rude. <laughs> so you guys walk into the mansion, and the interior of the mansion is well furnished. Uh, yet the fixtures show signs of great wear. Noticeable oddities are the boarded up windows and the presence of holy symbols in every room. The Burgomaster is in a side drawing room on the floor lying in a simple wooden coffin surrounded by wilting flowers and a faint odor of decay. So Ismark walks in and he hugs his sister and he's like, Irina, these are some friends that I made over at the tavern. Um, I believe they can help us. Uh, I want us to go to Veleki. I want to get you out of here. I don't think it is safe for you to stay in the shadow of the demon's castle any longer. And these people, I think they can help. Uh, They just need a night stay here. Uh, They need uh, Fazu's map. And um, I was hoping, and he looks over at Francisco. You said you wanted to go to the church, and I am going there this evening. Whoa. It you is all right. Don't you drink a little bit gas? <laughs> you guys didn't hear it. Bertan, th- thank you for following. Uh, but the sound that it makes just scared the crap out of me. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. I was doing Arcana the last time. <laughs> we were sitting there and someone followed. I was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. I gotta figure out how to throw it down. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> thanks for the follow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Friend, uh, he's talking to you, Francisco, and he goes, uh, you said you wanted to go to the church. I need to go there this evening anyway. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but my father is actually dead. It was kind of hard to miss. Yeah, that's the biggest reason why we need to leave. Was he, he some sort of uh... protector for you? He was, he was not a priest, but he was, in essence, a very holy man. Um, he points to all the holy symbols throughout the house. He served as a type of protection for my sister and I. Um, but now that he is gone, I, I, I fear, I fear that somehow Strad will gain entrance and will steal Irina away. And Irina speaks up. She's like, you you don't know that, Ismark. You don't know what he's going to do. I could be safe here. Listen. As someone who has been kidnapped, you don't know when they are going to come or what they are going to do to you. So you are going to go. You are going to leave. And mm-hmm. I'm not giving you a choice. Because what I went through is not what anyone should go through. And if this is a vampire, it could be much worse. And oh, besides, um, a woman like you is, is very beautiful and they shouldn't have to uh, experience such horrors. Uh, so, Emerlier, go ahead and give me a persuasion check. Do it with advantage. Francisco, are you still a woman? I'm still a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she looks at you and she's like, uh, say... I guess. Is that persuasion? That's a man. Yep. <laughs> I am not the man. I um, has it been an hour talking about that? 18. <laughs> oh, I know. I know you are. You, I, know you, I know you are right. I know I should go. It's it's hot. I, 
I will not go until our father is buried. I, I will not leave while he is dead on the mansion floor. And then, and then, fine, we can go. This has to all be done in the same night, though. Mm -hmm. so that's fine. Can you bury him tonight? Is that why you're going to the church? Is that, yeah, uh, Ismark speaks up. He's like, that's exactly what I was doing. He's He's been dead a couple of days now. Um... I I can't get him there myself. I was just going to drag uh, the coffin to the town, but I would prefer not to. The last thing we want to do is let everyone in town know that the burgomaster is dead. <laughs> Fate. Like that. Like what? Ignore him. Uh, he is very drunk. With He's had a very rough day. With the burgomaster gone. The fate of everyone in the village of Barovia will be the same. The protection is gone. There's literally nothing we can do. Letting them know that the Burgomaster is dead will only incite panic. And these people, they may be able to hold out in their homes. There's nothing to protect them. They might be able to go to the church and the priest Donovic might be able to help. But... It's going to be very hard until a new burgomaster comes and or is voted in or whatever we do. It's usually uh, uh, families, so I guess technically we would be next in line, but it's not safe. We are not holy people. So, uh, Francisco? Uh, Francesca. Francesca, I don't believe I know any of your names now that I think of it. I know uh, 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 me or uh, Mephisto. Mephisto is is easier si. to remember. Mephisto. Because... So yes, Mephisto. I I si. I've heard your name. Who is who are the rest si. of you? Sea plants. Sea plants. Okay, good uh... name. Uh, who are you? And he points to at the spit. Hey, I'm uh. Uh, the captain, um, this is my crew, and they do what I say. Uh, that is captain, correct. correct. What is your name? My name is Captain. Yeah. I, well, he pulls out, he pulls out a little eye patch from when you guys played pirate. <laughs> now we both have eye patches. <laughs> yeah, and he puts it on. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, I I lift mine and look down at him. Give him a wink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Captain. Uh, well, then I guess I'll be asking you if everyone else will be joining us. Yeah, I guess it's okay. They can come. <laughs> uh, what about the rest of you? Uh, what are your names? I'm Kinsley. And Kinsley. By this time, I'm sure my disguise self is about to drop. Okay, and so do I'll you... go back to... Yeah, so you, I, it, you drop it, and you end up growing an extra, what, couple of feet? A foot um, and a half. I mean, yeah. I was... I, I just looked like I was shorter. I wasn't actually shorter. So you transform, essentially, in front of them, and you look over at Irina when you do, and she actually does not look very surprised. Um, oh. She doesn't flinch at all, actually. Nice. I just kind um, of like, cause I don't intentionally drop it. It just goes away. So I just kind of like. Gotcha. So he looks over and you're Francesca. Uh, and uh, what about Francis. you? Francis. No, no, no. Fran Mephito, you are very drunk. I am Francesca. Francisco. No, no, no. That is, that is my brother. We are twins, <laughs> remember? <laughs> that is besides the, the point. Um, we will call you whatever you want to be called. We do not judge. Um, and he looks over at you, Emerlier. I'm Emerlier. Emerlier, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for agreeing to help us. Um, give me one moment. Uh, you see that uh, Ismark walks into another room real quick. Um, and he is collecting something and he comes back and he brings you guys the map he promised. Uh, he unfolds it onto the table. And this is what you guys see. 
One second, see one second. Everything. Everything. I really wish that I had a, uh, what is that? Do you guys oh. see it? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So he lays it down on the table and spreads it out, and he's like, this is Barovia. Uh, the borders of the map uh, represent uh, essentially where the fog is. Um, some of it is guessing, uh, but most of the roads uh, end about there. You can see here is our village, the village of Barovia. And Strad's castle is up here. Uh, the main road that goes through all of Barovia is the old Svalik road. Uh, and you can take it to get pretty much anywhere. Our goal when we leave here is to get over to just south of the lake of Zarevich uh, to Valaki. Um, that is the goal. It's much farther than I was expecting. It, it, uh, it will take us... Uh, gosh. Road. We don't have horses, so it will take some time. <laughs> Hoist. It also looks like we will be passing kind of close to the castle, no? Well, uh, we are much closer to the castle now than we will be going uh, on the road because uh, his castle is actually up on a giant hill and uh, uh, it goes down. So so you have Mount Gakis here in the south and uh, Mount Baratuk over here and the mountain range kind of encloses the entire valley. Um, so you can kind of see where it gets taller and where the valley gets shorter. Uh, we will be kind of in the uh, bottom of the valley as we follow the old Svalik road to Veleki. Is the road safe? No. Nothing in Barovia is safe. <laughs> Which is why I am needing you. All right, this sounds fair. Now, um, I, I would like to ask, when you and your sister are safe, I have, we have some questions that we need answered later, uh, ones that I did not ask tonight. Uh, perhaps you could help answer, but we will worry about that when we get to somewhere more safe. But I feel, oh. I guess, more comfortable to talk about them. Okay. That's fair the very. Enough. The Burger Master Fest. Yes. Okay. okay. So, um, Francisco and Ismark walk over to uh, the body of the Burger Master, and you look and you see that it doesn't look like anything's happened to him um like he wasn't killed by something or someone uh it just looks like he died suddenly um you see that ismark kind of looks down and he's like he's so tragic that he had to leave we are so going to miss him and he starts to pick up uh, a makeshift frame. Looking closer at the coffin, it looks like maybe Ismark and Irina uh, made this coffin themselves. Um, as Ismark is putting things on and closing up the coffin, he's like, no one will, no one in town will come and talk to my sister and me. They are unfortunately scared and ter terrified of, of Irina. Um, they all know that the vampire has taken a liking to her, so we had to do this ourselves. It is hard not to take a liking to her. How, uh, how did he die? You see, Irina walks up behind you guys and she says, The devil, he's... He sent uh, his monsters to to attack our home. You saw the scratches and the burn marks on the outside of the mansion for two weeks straight, every single night. He sent monsters and they scratched and they beat and they 
just did whatever they could to cause havoc against our house. My father's poor heart could not take it. He had a heart attack and died. That was... That was three days ago. And since then... No monsters have attacked our home. And they fulfilled their purpose. I do not wish to be insensitive, but is there anything in your home that was your father's that could help us in our journey? Besides the map, um, any nothing... holy symbols, anything that would radiate divinity, that would at least aid. You could take the holy symbols, but like I've said before, um, our gods seem to have forsaken us. Uh, so I don't know how much help they will be out in the roads. I mean, they do give a little extra protection here in homes because these monsters cannot come in unless invited. Uh, without a home to keep them out of, I don't know how effective they will be. I mean, you're welcome to take any off the wall. I mean, they're just going to be left here. Go look. Want to take a look? Yeah. Can I like? Can I look very specifically for the most strange, or uh, funky looking one? So actually, all of the holy symbols in this house look the same. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, what they are is the symbol of the Morning Lord is the a symbol of the rising sun. So you guys see, like, it's it's uh, symbols that are flat across the uh, or look like a horizon with like a a sun coming up and then sun spikes coming out. Um, and that's essentially what the holy symbol is, and they are just everywhere. Um, there's nothing super special about any of them most of them look homemade uh maybe made out of wood or made out of metal none of them look like they were made very well any of them made out of silver mm, you could give me an investigation check natural one <laughs> can i any of them insight made of his sister yeah go ahead Make an insight. Any of them made of gold? There's a reason I was asking about silver, I know, man. I, I mean, I know why you're asking about silver, but, like, going with, you know, me... I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. As the DM, this is an extremely poor, sad society. As far as jewels and stuff are concerned, Barovians probably don't have very much. I seriously doubt that they would make a lot of it into symbols at home maybe in a church but not in a dwelling i take the pointiest and sharpest looking wooden one okay i just pick a random one i don't really pay much attention to which one it is so surprise me <laughs> okay. Do i'll I, look at it later <laughs> would i know anything about like vampires werewolves um like Anything so give that me, would be good against them? Well, give me one second. Francisco, going back to you, your uh, insight check on Irina. You got a two? Yeah, so you can't tell. You can't tell what's going on with her, what her deal is. As far as you know, she just is some girl that's being targeted. Um, Kinsley, being, go ahead and give me a... If, okay, are, are you specifically thinking vampires or werewolves? Vampire. Vampires, go ahead and give me a history check. History? Yes. It's 11. So, I mean, you've heard of vampires. You know of them. You know of their existence. Um, you know that they are uh, creatures of the, uh, like like uh necrotic type stuff like they are not holy so holy would probably do something against them um but you're you don't really know anything else um you don't know what else might um uh, help against them okay. yeah can i see if i can recall anything about werewolves go ahead give me a history check bro you was drunk 
I know. <laughs> yeah, so do it with disadvantage because you are drunk. <laughs> I rolled a nine and then a nat 20. Oh, that's a nine. Uh, yeah. Is that plus uh, anything? His, history, right? That's a plus one. So that's a 10. A 10. Okay. So uh, you two, you know of werewolves. You know of their existence. Um, it's pretty commonly known that uh, silver is pretty effective against them. Um, but you don't know much about werewolves beyond that. Should we uh, make our way to the church? Uh, Probably a good idea. Yes, I, I will help you. Okay. So uh, Francisco and uh, Ismark together, they are able to lift the coffin. Um, he kind of takes you um, around the outside of town. Um, you guys don't walk through the center of town, but you, you go on the west side and kind of make your way around going behind houses um, and eventually you make your way to um, to the church and let me pop that up real quick so uh, atop a slight rise against the roots of the pillar stone that supports castle Ravenloft stands a gray sagging edifice of stone and wood this church has obviously weathered the assaults of evil for centuries, uh, centuries on end, and is worn and wary. A bell tower rises towards the back, and flickering light shines through holes in the shingled roof. The rafters strain feebly against their load. So you guys see this pretty, pretty big but not huge church. Um, are you guys uh, walking up to it? Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. following. Yeah, we're following uh, him. Yeah. So you guys walk up close and you see that the heavy wooden doors of the church are covered with claw marks and scarred by fire. Again, uh, any windows that were here are boarded up. Um, you see that um, Ismark walks up and he just opens the doors and starts walking in. Um, as you guys walk through the main hall... Uh, you see that the door is open to reveal a 10-foot-wide, 20-foot-long hall leading to a brightly lit chapel at the end. The hall itself is unlit and reeks of mildew. Four doors, two on each side of the hall, lead to adjacent chambers. You can see that the chapel is strewn with debris, and you hear a soft voice from within reciting a prayer. Suddenly, the, sp the prayer is blotted out by an inhumane sc or inhuman scream that rises up from beneath the wooden floor. Uh, inhuman uh, scream, you say? Yep, you hear you hear a shriek coming from below. Uh, you see, that? you see that Ismark is not, he's not phased. He's still walking. Uh, and Irina um, behind you guys is is I still just continuing this to walk. This may be normal for you but we don't often hear screaming coming from the floorboards yes um that is the reason why no barovians uh come to the chapel anymore uh it might be better if our priest donovic tells you about that so he continues to walk and he walks into um, the chapel, and uh, you see that the chapel is in shambles, uh, with overturned and broken pews littering the dusty floor. Dozens of candles mounted in candlesticks and candelabras light every dusty corner in a fervent attempt to rid the chapel of shadows. At the far end of the church sits a claw-scarred altar, behind which kneels a priest in soiled vestments. Next to him hangs a long, thick rope that stretches up into the bell tower. And then, as you guys get closer, from beneath the chapel floor, you hear a young man's voice cry out, Father, I'm starving. And Donovic is just sitting there praying. He hears your footsteps. And he gets up and turns and looks. It's like... He's Mark. That brings you to the chapel, son. Father, it's unfortunate. Um, 
I'm sorry I could not bring him to you sooner. I'm sorry we could not um, do much until now. But my father is dead. He died three days ago. You see Donovic looks down. Shakes his head. Again, another one. What is this world coming to? Their conversation is happening in between screams from downstairs. They kind of stop, let it happen, did, uh, and keep talking. Uh, yeah. No, okay. Mm. It's very know. uncomfortable. You, obviously, this is normal for you, but what is underneath our feet? Yes, uh, strangers. Um, more adventures, it appears. Uh, welcome to Barovia, I guess. Mm. Uh, mm. So, take a seat. Uh, I, I, I will tell you. He walks over to the broken down pews. There are a couple that are still standing, and he sits down. He's like, it is very unfortunate uh, that you are here in Borovia. I would not wish this upon anyone. Um, down there, hidden away from the world, is my son. His name is Doru. Well, he's what's left of my son. Mm. About a year ago, um, an evil... Well, not evil. A wizard in black robes came to Barovia and he convinced he convinced a lot of our villagers to take a stand against Strad. It was a poor choice. My son decided to join them. By all accounts, the wizard is dead. The people who joined him are dead. And my son is dead. He returned to me a few days later. A vampire spawn. He is not my son. He is what is left of him. And I pray every day to the Morning Lord on how I can free him without having to kill him. He has been down there for over a year. I don't know what to do. I pray for guidance. But the morning Lord does not hear our prayers as often uh, as he used to. So that is what is down there. I mean, I don't know what, what else to tell you. Welcome to Abarovia. Hmm. And he turns away and his mark, I am sorry about your father. He was a, a great man, a good, good man, uh, a good burgomaster. He did what he could. I, I would bury him this evening, uh, but in our tradition, I think it is better we do it in the morning. It is getting late and it is not safe. Maybe uh, come back in the morning and we will bury him then. Ismark looks and he's like, you're right, father. I'm, I'm sorry. I should have thought of that. Um, we can come back in the morning. Um, Is it safe to go back to your home without your father there? So, like I said before, um... Strad himself cannot enter our home without an invitation. Uh, and yet he's, he's been getting to your sister. He... We have not figured out how that happens. We know that vampires have tricky things they can do. He cannot come in himself without an invitation. It does not mean he cannot convince someone to go outside. I lean over to Imralir and I rem 
and I leaned over and I kind of I want to whisper this. Do you remember what the old woman said about the traitor, the wealthy woman? And that's all I say. So while she's uh, looking that up, uh, Ismark continues uh, and he says, So Strahd's minions have not come back to our house for a few days. Uh, for a few evenings, I do not believe he knows of our intentions to leave. I believe that his goal was to essentially kill my father. And he, he has succeeded. I don't know what his next plans are, but uh, it's a gamble. What do we do? Do we stay in a house where he cannot enter and is pretty effective against his minions, I must say? Or do we try to go somewhere else where we have no idea? Uh, I mean, you could stay here in the church, but there's not much room. I believe that um, for tonight, it might be good to stay with you and your sister. Perhaps what you could... I'm thinking is that uh, <laughs> we all have a nice little sleepover in the same room, in the dome. Mm. I look at Kinsley. And uh, there are two people up. Keep watch. Agreed. So you guys continue to hear screaming from downstairs. <laughs> what is he hungry for? I'm assuming. What, what do you think? Okay, yeah. very well. He has not eaten a drop. Ever. He has been down there. I have locked him away, and until I can figure out how to cure him, he will stay there. And if you can't cure him? At least he is locked away. And Father, I, I have a question for you. In these lands, what is considered a symbol of hope? What is considered a symbol of protection among these people? From what I know, vine. Vine is the lifeblood of Barovia. Without it, uh, those of us who are sane would no longer be. It is the one thing we can really look forward to. Vine is all this people has. We need to get rest. Yes. Um, I suppose we shall get going then. Okay. Come back in the morning and we will... We will bury the Burgomaster. However, um... If you are interested... I can show you... I can show you what has become of those who came before you. But you would have to stay here for the night. And you would have to stay up until midnight with me. And then I can show you. Uh, you could stay in the chapel. Uh, there is one extra bed in a bedroom that used to be Doru's. Uh, he obviously does not use it. But if you want to see what happened. Or what has become of those before you. You are welcome uh, to stay. I almost want to refuse your request, but um, I am curious. Uh, uh, do we I think know. that perhaps one of us should stay and see in the rest gone guard? I'll stay. Uh, no, oh, I... you are not <laughs> You are not in, in, in the position. Oh, Out of everyone, I am probably the best to stay behind. All right. I will go with Kinsley and me, and we shall protect the, the fair lady and her brother. Does that sound agreeable to everybody? The only reason I am not disagreeing is... I'm the only one who has the dome. Exactly. Uh, okay. 
So uh, Francisco, Kinsley, me, is Spit staying with Imrelir or going with no, you guys? Spit's coming with us. Okay, so Take Spit goes spit. with you guys. Uh, yeah. uh, Backup character. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> is Mark He's gonna stay in the dope? <laughs> so so Ismark and Irina lead you guys back to the house. Um, you guys get there. Kinsley, you're able to set up your dome. Uh, you just set it up in uh, the foyer or like the, the living room where the body was. It's the only room really big enough uh, where you can do something like that. You see that all the windows in there have been barred. It, didn't re- it doesn't really matter which room, which room you stay in. Um, it's uh, going to be all susceptible everywhere. So you set up your dome and you get it all ready. Um, Imrelir, as you stay with uh, uh, Priest Donovic, Father Donovic, I guess we could call him, um, he beckons you out to the Can graveyard. Can I inside check him real quick? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, make an inside check. And I'm like, you know, just let me stay if I can. <laughs> nope, okay. Let's <laughs> see. That's Yeah, that's an eight. Yeah, he was just thinking, ah, no big deal. You know, just hanging out. This place is terrible. How much more terrible can it get? <laughs> well, I'm sure it's going to get so much more terrible. Yeah. So uh, as the night gets older um, and as it gets closer to midnight, uh, you and Father Donovic walk out behind the church and he takes you to uh the graveyard um inside the graveyard there is a stone bench and he sits down and he beckons for you to sit next to him and he says it's uh it's going to start any minute now just just watch um a few minutes later you see an eerie green light starts to suffuse the graveyard from this light emerges a ghostly procession. Wavering images of dowdy women toting great swords, wood wise men with slender bows, dwarves with glittering axes, and archaically dressed mages with beards and strange pointed hats, all these and more march forth from the graveyard, their num- numbers growing by the second. These aren't the spirits, are Priest Donovic turns to you and he goes, These aren't the spirits of the people buried here. These are the previous adventurers who died trying to destroy Strad. These are the ones who came before you. Every night, the ghostly adventurers attempt to complete their quest. Each night they fail. They have no interest in the living. Go ahead, swing whatever you want at them. You won't hurt them. They won't stop. They will not communicate with you. They go to the castle. They reach it. They march straight through the chapel in the castle. They walk all the way through to the other side. And they fling themselves down the side of the mountain. This is the fate that those who came before had. This is the fate that potentially awaits you and your friends. I am sorry. If you choose not to go after the demon, you will be living in Barovia. If you go after him, who knows? Maybe you succeed. Maybe you lift the curse. Maybe all of Barovia is freed. These adventures before you thought that that gamble was worth it. If you and your friends decide, that is up for you. There are adventurers who came before who gave up, who chose not to. What became of them, I do not know. But this is what happens to those that Strad kills. They are trapped. Just like the rest of us. I just wanted you to know. I know it is not 
It's not reassuring, I'm sure. But it is what it is. See, afterwards he gets up. Do you believe in this God you pray to? I believe in him with all my heart. Because if I had nothing to believe in, I would be just like everyone else in town, hiding, hiding away, living a life of shambles. You have to have something to believe in. And trust in the ones he has brought here, because I intend to finish what these ghosts have started. I have someone who is waiting for me back home, and I won't let some vampire keep me from him. You see, he chuckles a little to himself, looks down, puts his hands behind his back. I hope you are right. I pray you are right. Just because you cannot hear your God doesn't mean he cannot hear you. That is why I continue to pray. And he turns and starts walking back to the chapel. I would come inside, though. Um... This is almost the witching hour, and the monsters start to come. Mm. Sure. So you guys make your way back inside, and um, as everyone else in town does, he bars up all the doors, locks them like crazy, makes his way back to the front of the uh, chapel where there are four uh, different doors, he goes uh, walking south. He goes to the first one on the right, um, and he uh, pokes his head in, and he said, this, uh, this is my room. Uh, the door, one more down on the right side, right there. He points to it. That one is where you can stay. It was my son's room, um, but he no longer needs it. You are welcome to have it, and he goes inside. I sit down on his bed, and, uh, and I go to the room, sit on the bed, look around. Okay. Uh, you see that this dirty, lightless room contains a wooden bed with a straw-filled mattress. Uh, mounted above the bed's headboard is a wooden holy symbol. Other than that, um, there's a chest uh, in the corner that is open. Uh, you assume probably used for clothes or other things, uh, but the room is pretty bare besides that. How well does this holy symbol look? It looks better than the homemade ones, but not by much. It's um, The uh, ones in the house were made of uh, wood and some of metal, but a lot of the metal was rusted. Uh, this one looks like it's been taken care of and polished, um, but it looks like crude iron still. Like It doesn't look like it's much better. Mm, just kind of touch it. Okay, you touch it and... Feels like cold metal. Nothing interesting happens. I wonder what it's like to pray to a god. Hmm. I'll go lay down and go to sleep. Okay. Uh, you guys back at the mansion? Are you wanting to do anything before you go to bed? I pull Kinsley aside for a second. You okay. not, nothing, nothing too long. Nothing crazy. Um, Kinsley? Maybe I'm just being paranoid, but keep an eye on this sister. I do not, I do not trust her. I can try. Mm, but someone's keeping watch. Make sure she is not alone. Of course. I can stay up with her if you would like. Take a watch with her. Mm, that would be excellent if you could, if you would be willing to do that. All right. Thank you. Damn, real quick. Yep. Would these two burgomaster people be considered wealthy? So the burgomaster families normally are considered wealthy. <clears throat> um, in the village of Barovia, this village specifically, uh, there is little to no wealth. So... Yes, they live in a mansion, um, and it has more rooms, but it's still, like, 
like not much is there i'm um, probably the only one in town that could say he might be wealthy um would probably be the one shopkeeper in town um the one that you guys saw because he actually has provisions and he actually has stuff um other than that uh most people that live in town don't have a lot of money okay. yeah. Thank you. So you guys uh, take your rest. Uh, you guys yeah. get a nice long rest. First thing me does. <laughs> what? Oh, me just passes Sleep. out. I am. Uh, me like falls over and just passes out on the ground uh, somewhere. So we so, can safely say we had a long rest. Yes, you had a long rest. You guys slept <sighs> through the night. Um, as dawn approached, uh, Ismark wakes everyone. Um, and he's like, it, uh, it's it's time to go s to the church. Um, I'm sorry, uh, we can't sleep in very late. Uh, we have to do this in the morning. Um, so he begins to rouse everyone. Is there another Apple fight? And we're gonna mm -hmm. get buried. Oh my uh, gosh. So, so morbid. So we didn't have any food or drink. So uh, right. We no. Have so. So Ismark does um, end up, when he wakes you, comes from the kitchen and does hand out some, like, bread and other stuff. They don't have a lot. Um, so he's just handing out bread and cheese. And then whatever's left over, he starts packing into, like, his his bag. And Irina's packing into her bag. <clears throat> so you guys do get some food. So would that count towards getting rid of the exhaustion point? Sleeping yeah. gets rid of your exhaustion. Yeah. Uh, okay. It, for yeah. me, it says it requires food and drink. Oh, well, well, you are getting food and drink this rest. morning. Yep. All right. Usually you eat your rations. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not at I'm not at 14 HP anymore. And you're not <laughs> drunk anymore. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, eventually, you guys get all packed up. You get all ready to go. As you are leaving the mansion, you see that Ismark and Irina um, are kind of walking through the rooms, saying goodbye. Um, I mean, they grew up here. They've been here since they were children. Um, and they slowly make their way to the front door. And Ismark comes up and he's like, Well, adventures? Adventures? Uh, do you have a name? Should What should we call you as a group? Um, no, that is a very good question. Well, we are just a bunch of misfits, really. We don't uh, really go by anything. Well, for now, I guess until you decide on something, um, misfits, is that, what about, you are lost in Borovia, how about, uh, the lost misfits, until you find your way home? Oh, I don't see why not, uh, well, we can, uh, we can workshop it. <laughs> yes, it is concern, yes. He turns, uh, opens the door, and starts walking towards the chapel with Irina. And you guys follow suit. Yep. And yep. you make your way back north. You make your way back up. Eventually, you do get to the church. Um, and uh, you see that uh, Donovic, the local priest, is uh, sitting outside waiting for you guys to arrive. Uh, Imrelir, where are you? You still in bed? Um, or? I'm with him. Okay, so you guys are sitting out front. You guys still hear the screams of Doru under under the church, um, and uh, Father or Donovic uh, uh, welcomes and bids you all forward. And he's like, uh, "Please make your way to the graveyard. Um, I have already gotten things ready. Um, all we need is to place him in um, and say farewells." So you guys make your way to the graveyard you all stand in a circle and father donovic uh asks if anyone would like to say anything and uh ismark steps forward and he's like father i i'm sorry for never being strong enough i i know you wanted me to be stronger every day so i could continue to pr protect barovia i hope that one day i can meet those expectations you've a, a wonderful father a wonderful burgomaster you will be sorely missed see Irina comes up and she's like hi uh, 
I know you are not my true father. I know that um I was only adopted. I don't I don't know where I came from or what happened. I don't know anything about my life before I met you. But you gave me a good one. You were such a striking man. I just hope one day I can make you proud. Father Donovic comes forward and uh, Ismark goes over to where two shovels, shovels are laying and he picks one up um, and he starts filling up the, the grave. Um, Father Donovic comes over and he starts attempting to help, but he's a little feeble, so it's a little difficult for him. I go over and take over for him to help. Okay, so you go over, you put a hand on the priest's shoulder and indicate at the at the shovel that you'd like to take over and he he graciously hands it to you and francisco and ismark barry barry the late burgo master the wonderful wonderful man kolyan in 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 Dirovic was his name and you see that as soon as the grave has been completely covered the priest walks over to the head and he bows his head and begins to pray. And he goes, Oh, morning, Lord, the father of our, of our world. The one who protects us. The one who wants nothing more than for his children to find their way back to him. Please help. Help Kolyan Indirovich. Find his way out of Barovia, out of this terrible place, so he can be back to you one day. He was a good holy man, and he deserves to sit with you in your halls in the sun. We pray for these things. Amen. You hear that? Irina and Ismark say amen. And I do as so. well. Um, Kind of like mumble something like the man just like quiet. I'm <laughs> not really sure. <laughs> um, so once the burial is over, uh, the burger or uh, uh, Donovich walks over to Irene, Irina, and he says, "My child, uh, I don't know if you ever knew this, but the burgomaster found you at the edge of the woods." You were walking around in a daze. You couldn't have been more than a couple of years old. I, I, I don't know if this is something you knew, but that is where he found you. He found you there. And the moment he found you, he loved you. He always wanted a daughter, and here was one... He used to say the morning Lord provided you. We all laughed at that, knowing that uh, the morning Lord does not answer prayers like that. At least not so, uh, not so brashly. <laughs> she smiles, uh, feeling in her heart that what the priest is telling her is true, and is smiling, knowing that she has a little more information about the man that she called father. Um... He turns, Donovic then turns to Ismark, and he says, Ismark, your sister needs to be taken out of here. I know, you, I, I understand that is your plan. Uh, you could go to uh, Veleki, uh, that is one place, uh, but I suggest take her to the Abbey of St. Markovia in Kresk. That is a holy place. That is somewhere that she should be safe. It is a bit further. Uh, if you can get there, do it. Veleki, I heard, is protected, but it is not a holy place. And I, I think that it would be better if she was at the Abbey. As Mark turns, he's like, thank you, Father. I, I will see what we can do. He turns to you guys. He looks at all of you standing there. You really are a bunch of misfits. You've got something tiny with you. Look at this little green guy. And then someone as tall as you. Kinsley. 
Your big doll eyes. You're beautiful. Two of you. I don't know what you are, but I can sense uh, something unhuman about you. And he looks at Francisco and me. And you, with the long years, I'm not sure what you are either, but you are all different and that makes you special. You've come to Barovia as friends, I hope. And I hope one day that you will be able to leave here as friends as well. This is a dark and horrid place. It's going to be your home for a while and I hope that my sister and I can make it feel a little better. Welcome to Barovia. And that's where we'll end our session. Uh, oh my <laughs> so much. My brain is like on fire right now. There's so many things. I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is a big is one. is freaking out. Hey guys, this is a big campaign and it is I dark. Know. It is. I mean, there are some good things here and there. I mean, Ismark and Irina, they're good people. Donovic's trying his best, even though his son is a vampire spawn. What do you do? So I'm just, I'm, I'm reading so deep into everything because of like the previous <laughs> sessions. I'm, I've been looking at them over and over again. Like, I've literally <laughs> just been like, when just is this going to thinking have been? about Saloon. Am I going to be able to do any of my magic eventually? Is that going to, like, be messed up? I'm thinking about the dream that I had last session and, you know, every single thing that, you know, he was saying about, uh, I can't remember her name now, but, like, how uh, he found her. Oh, oh Irina. Oh, my gosh. Irina? Yeah. yeah. My first thought when, when um, he said that he found Irina was has she ever touched silver before you guys are so well, guys, suspicious yeah. of her yeah. you guys will look, just have to look, find I'm out i'm waiting for a traitor okay that's because, what i'm most like, concerned about it's gonna be one of like, us here's one my us. thought though she's been bitten twice and hasn't turned what are the rules for a werewolf being turned into but also a vampire? strahd like can only come in to the house if he's invited. She's been yeah, bitten, that, bitten twice. That makes her very she suspicious. came in twice. They also have potential abilities to harm control people. Yeah. Anyway, speculation, speculation, <laughs> speculation. Someone, someone <laughs> other than her Trust invite them no into the house. Yeah. So, so uh, everyone at home, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first episode for our new saga, The Curse of Strahd. Um, we are not going to have a session next Friday because I will be busy, unfortunately. Uh, but I'm going to try my hardest to put this up in YouTube before I leave. If not, then it won't be up this week. It'll be next. I've only got like little bit to do it uh so yeah uh thank you so much for watching uh does anyone have any other announcements besides uh no campaign next week arcana inc it has been moved so no longer sunday night at five it is going to now be wednesdays at six starting this coming wednesday i don't know who's going to be with me but we're drawing oh. characters from our second campaign Yo, I mean, unfortunately, it can't be me. I'm going to be busy. <laughs> I could hop home for an hour and... If not, yeah, we yeah. can do one of the NPCs. That's true. That's true. Because I do, have, I do probably... I have picked an NPC. Okay. Maybe have you do it because we need to get you in before you leave. Oh, yes. Yes, because I will be going the following Friday. Ah. So, yeah. So, let's back get you to first. School. Back to school. school so, yes, be safe. Uh, be safe. Trevor, who is going to be DMing our second campaign, he is going to then be joining me for Arcana Inc. Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time to draw his NPC. Awesome. And I'm going to probably do a simpler like thing this time. I spent too much time on these campaign characters. So I'm probably <laughs> going to do more like a flat thing. I don't have time for going into as much as I did. Before. Yeah, and I have... But I have a really good so idea good. what this guy looks like. So cool. All right. Anyone else? Uh, I will not be streaming at all this week because okay. I won't be home. 
all week. There you go. Uh, um, Francisco or Trevor. Yeah, I put up a, uh, a new video earlier this week. I'm working on uh, another one that should be up sometime this coming week as well. I also have uh, a new uh, song on SoundCloud that I did. It's just kind of a piano piece that I have played a billion times that I wrote from forever ago. Uh, that's up. Uh, it's going to be up tonight. Uh, so if you want to check that out after this stream, uh, and I think that's it for me. All right. Me, you have anything? No, no, we're good. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. So excited for this new campaign. Yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoy oh, it. Ooh, it's going to be good. Okay. So, <laughs> so good. yeah. Uh, uh, thank man. you so much for watching. We will see you next time down by the lakeside. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.